our day of thanksgiving testimonies and prayer. I believe God, you're ready, you're prepared. Oh, it is wonderful to give thanks to the Lord. And the psalmist says, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Our God deserves our thanks. So, brothers and sisters, let me start by saying happy new month to you again. And welcome to this meeting. We'll take a short exhortation and then we will go into our thanks and testimonies and then we will take, we will pray. Hallelujah. I believe you are ready this morning. So uh, the title of the, my exhortation or our exhortation is on Thanksgiving and testimony. Uh, I title it, When Should We Thank God? When Should We Thank God? Oh, I believe you already have an answer or at least uh, a perspective to that. So when should we thank God? Let's start by uh, looking at thanksgiving and testimonies. Um, just taking a perspective of it. Our thanksgiving and testimonies are our expression of faith in God. Who he is in his power and his faithfulness to his promises. Our thanksgiving and testimonies are our expression of faith in God, in who he is, in his power and faithfulness to his promises. It is our honor to him and confident boasts in our God. Psalm 34, verse 2, Psalm 34, verse 2 says, My soul shall make its boasts in the Lord. My soul shall make its boasts in the Lord. Psalm 22, verse 33 also says, But you are holy and throne in the praises of Israel. So, while we honor God with our thanksgiving and testimonies and express our confident or make our confident boast in him, we should remember that God really loves thanksgiving and testimonies. He loves our thanksgiving and testimonies, as that Psalm 22 verse 3 has confirmed. But you are holy and thrown in the praises of Israel. Can somebody say you are holy, enthroned in the praises of his children? That's what that scripture means. You are holy, enthroned in my praises, in the praises that I give to you, in the praises that I and my family, my brothers and sisters, we give to you, Almighty God. And so when we praise God, God is enthroned in our praises. No wonder Psalm 100 verse 4, Psalm 100 verse 4 says, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. So when should we thank God? Is it when we have all good? No challenge at all in our lives as some often expect? Is it when we are healthy, wealthy, and well fed? Our bank accounts are swelling. Is it when all our desires, hopes, and expectations are met? When should we thank God? Should we thank God only when it is good, sweet, and rosy? For many, that's when they remember to thank God. And that's why the most popular thanksgiving is our wedding anniversaries and birthdays, especially for those who are wealthy and for those 
whom God has spared their lives to begin to hit the silver, the golden, the platinum jubilee. But when should we really thank God, brothers and sisters? The Bible makes it unequivocally clear. In that Psalm 34 that I mentioned, I really like you to open your Bible with me because today I want us to thank God with understanding. I want us to thank God that we know Psalm 34, verse 1. Let's look at it. When should we really thank God? Can you read it out with me? I will bless the Lord at all times. When should we thank God? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Glory be to God. So, we should bless the Lord. We should thank God. We should testify of God's goodness in good times and bad times. Actually, brothers and sisters, there is nothing like bad time for those who are in Christ because all things work together for good. Every challenge make us stronger and grow bigger in God. For an example, Paul and Silas demonstrated this to us that indeed God thus indwell the praises of his people. God is enthroned in the pla praises and testimonies of his children. In Acts chapter 16, verse 25 and 26, Acts chapter 16, verses 25 and 26, Paul and Silas were in chains and they were in prison, but they understood the power of praise and thanksgiving, so they sang. And they prayed while in prison. And the Bible says suddenly, suddenly, God enthroned their praises. Glory be to God. Today, as you praise God, as you testify, know that the Almighty God has descended upon your praises and your thanksgiving and your testimony. God is with you, brothers and sisters. God is with us. God is with our family. God is in everything we do. Let our faith be strong. Let our faith be, be strengthened and be built up. Just learn to thank God. As that scripture says, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. We always default to gurus and masters those who have succeeded and have the skills and knowledge and expertise in different subjects of life. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to the power of praise and thanksgiving, David has no equal. David has no comparison. It is him, David, who has told us this secret of thanksgiving. Enter into his court, into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praise. He said, be thankful to him and bless his name. If you want to see God enthroned in your life, learn to bless his name and praise him. And so Paul and Silas sang and prayed and suddenly God descended because he understood the secret of bringing God to be here in their matter. God descended to receive his honor because our thanksgiving and testimonies are honor and our confident boast in God. God descended to receive his honor and their chains fell because whenever God comes, when God's presence shows up, every obstacle gives way, every chain falls away. And so their chains fell off their hands. Their prison doors opened. And so shall it be to you today as you testify and thank God. And not just today, all through this month that by the grace of God, we have declared that it is our month of divine mercy. As you wake up in the morning, praise him. As you're sleeping in the night, praise him. In all things, 
give God thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. Brothers and sisters, learn to thank God and testify of his goodness all the time in every situation. Remember, a thankful heart, a grateful heart receives more blessing from God. A thankful heart, a grateful heart receives victory from God. A thankful heart a grateful heart receives answers to prayers. And in fact, when we thank God and bless him with our testimonies, he comes to dwell with us. And things that we didn't even expect will happen in our lives. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 18 says, common scripture that we know, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Oh, beloved brothers and sisters, while I was praying today and reading this scripture, suddenly I had a light, a, 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 a light bulb. Oh, it went boom in my eyes. It went it glowed in my heart. I got a revelation of this word. You know, every time I have heard this word and I have read it, I have always thought that this scripture meant that in every situation, circumstances, thank God, because that circumstance, that situation is the will of God for your life, for my life. <laughs> Beloved brothers and sisters, after now, go and read it again. That's not what the scripture is saying. Oh, I got the revelation and I was just blown apart. I was just excited. I couldn't stop, brothers and sisters. Just thanking God. Here is the revelation I was given. And when I say revelation, I mean the understanding. The spirit of God just ministered it to my heart. It was so strong. Like, I, I mean, I, 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 I just couldn't stop. So let's read it again. And then hear the meaning of it. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Because I know many of you thought just like I had assumed. And like we have been saying, oh, in that situation, that's the will of God for your life. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This verse was a continuation of verses 16 and 17, which you can go back and read. This is what the Spirit of God is speaking here. The will of God is not the circumstance or circumstances. That is not the will of God. The will of God that the scripture is talking about is your thanksgiving. Glory be to God. So the Bible here says in every situation, whatever circumstance you find yourself, what do you do? That you should do the will of God. And that will of God is that you should give thanks. And so when should we give thanks, brothers and sisters? All the time. So, now you can see the power of that scripture. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all time. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. This is that will of God concerning you. This is the will of God concerning you. Is there somebody here who is ready to glorify God, to bless the Lord at all times, to testify of his goodness, of his mercy, of his wonderful works, of his love that God has brought us into the month of June. He has carried us through January, February, March, April, May, 
This is June, beloved brothers and sisters. And there I remind us, the word the Lord gave to us that this year is the characteristic of this year. And it, it, and it came so early. It was in November 2021 that that word was given to us. That the year that is coming, the characteristic of it can best be described as roller coaster. Wild changes and uncertainty. And the second part was that in the midst of all that, it will be a year of two halves. If you thought you've seen anything in first half, wait for the second half. How this year will end, I don't know, brothers and sisters. But one thing I know is that the mercy of God will keep you. The mercy of God will keep me. The mercy of God will keep God's children. Go ahead and give God thanks. Give God praise. Glorify him. And I pray that the almighty God be enthroned in our lives as we praise him and testify to his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So now, let's go ahead and give our thanks. Do you have a testimony? Do you have a praise, a thanks that you want to share? That's what we're going to be doing now. Haven't heard this exhortation on Thanksgiving. Uh, that we have uh, spent the past 15 minutes sharing. Please go ahead. Open the line freely, freely. Open the line and share your testimony, share your thanks, share your praise. Uh, if it is a song you want to sing, go ahead, do it. Yes, Sister Comfort, go ahead. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The family of God, sing with me. Let us sing unto, unto the, the Lord, Lord a joyful, joyful song. song. And bless his name for the oh, Lord, Lord is good. Amen. Let us sing unto oh, the Lord a joyful, a joyful song. song. A joyful song. And bless the Lord. And his name for the Lord, the Lord is good. Is so praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, the scriptures I'm reading is Psalm 1, Psalm 9, sorry, verse 1. It says, I will give thanks to, the, to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. Uh, let God bless the reading of his holy words. Amen. On the second of uh, this month, <laughs> after I have uh, read, I sent text to my friends uh, according to Psalm one one eight sixteen, the exalted hand of the Lord, the uplifted right hand of the Lord, will do mightily. Some say valiantly. I send it. I went inside my car to go out. The car has been driven for over five years. Well, I, I entered the car, but because my son parked the car close to the wall, so I took the, uh, the passenger side. So at the moment I said, okay, let me roll this car out a little and then stop, so, and then I could balance and sit well and then drive out. That was that. I could only see the start button. I saw the rivers, 
then the uh, accelerator pedal. After I put my legs there, I don't know what happened. So the car rolled back, crossed a very busy road, and went in onto my neighbor's uh, fence. So I could only hear the, the bank of the car. So then people came out. The car was stopped. The door couldn't open. Mm. So I couldn't come out. Yeah. But at first I started to panic, but the the panic just went. I felt the deep peace that I have. I for a long time I have not. People wow. were ah, do you want water? Can we bring you up? I said no. Do, do you can we bring you tea? No. Then what do we do? I said, don't worry, let me sit down and recollect myself. So God came to me, like what you have said. I said, whatever is the outcome of that situation, that is the best that God could do for me. Amen. So I did not say it is God that say I must do that, but mm -hmm. God came to my rescue. Mm -hmm. So I thank him so much. Yeah. And even till to now, I'm not bothered about the damage. I'm not bothered about everything, but to thank God who has preserved my life. Yes. Make me this strong and healthy. So I want all of you to thank God for me. My God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. Nothing missing, nothing broken. You are well intact. God, God be with you. Whatever Amen. God has not ordained for our lives will, will not stand. It Amen. will not come to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for that uh, in, in, testimony. God bless you. Uh, Brother Dara, go ahead. Okay, good morning, everyone. I want to thank God specially for the gift of a, a baby and his faithfulness throughout the month of May. God has continued that um, promise of provision and the, the job of have, having me trust him. And I just want to return all thanks and glory to him for the baby and the mother and their safety and their health. And I pray that that which is started, he will do it to perfection. And all thanks be to him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Newborn baby to the family of Brother Dara and baby and the wife and mother are in good health. Glory be to God. Thanks be to God. God bless you, brother. Bless the baby and bless the mother. Bless the entire family. Yes, brother Sonny. Okay, seems to be a bit of challenge with Sonny's uh, uh, line. We can't hear you, brother Sonny, so you may try again. Uh, somebody else who wants to go next. Next. Feel free, you're sharing your thanks your appreciation to God. Brassoni, you, you're on again. Try again. Let's see. Yeah, good morning, Pastor. I'm good morning. Yes, uh, I want to thank God, Pastor, this morning for the gift of life. I thank him for, for everything that he has done in my life as a person. And uh, to be specific here, 
We've just done with the 2022 uh, JAM exam that I've been running with some students. And I want to thank God that uh, this year result has been so excellent. Uh, many of them, uh, our students have done very well in the exam. Even those that the parents brought to us and said that they have actually lost hope in them and gave them the final chance that if they don't pass the exam this year, some of them have written the exam for up to four times without making any progress. But many of them, I think about four of them that their fathers and mothers actually uh, complain seriously about them. They have surprised us in the center. So I want to believe that uh, God has really done something using you. You know, we've been having uh, prayers for the children, even before the exams, you pray for them, you pray for success. And what many of them have actually said, they keep on telling me that uh, their results even surprise them. So I thank God for what God has done for the success he has given to the children. I say may all glory be given unto him. Thank you. Oh, glory be to God. Our God is able to do all things. Praise be to him. That's the uh, student group that uh, as part of our outreach, Brother Sonia arranged for us to be speaking to them. And I spent a number of Saturdays speaking to them, uh, teaching and encouraging and praying with them. So we we'll thank God too for this testimony. As, we've all, as we learn in the book of Acts, let's just release ourselves. The acts of God has not stopped. God will use us to do his miracles as he pleases him. Jesus is still in the business of turning water into wine. Okay, um, the love sister Ayomaji, please go ahead, ma. Your hand is raised. You have Praise the, the Lord. Hallelujah. It's great to be with my brethren this morning. Thank I'm God for what you have you. Doing. Thank God. So my testimony is just to appreciate the faithfulness of God to my family, to me as an individual. Um, praise be to his name. Last week's Sunday, exactly a week ago, we privileged to celebrate the graduation of um, our middle daughter in the United States to oh, the glory Lord. of God. So that was graduation last Sunday. But um, we also have another graduation this Friday of our first daughter. So within 11 days or 12 days, God is giving us the privilege to celebrate two graduations in this family. Or let me say two graduation ceremonies, because our first daughter graduated actually in 2020. But due to the COVID, you know, um, the ceremony did not hold. So we all thought, okay, the opportunity for that is gone forever. Mm. Only for after, you know, we had confirmed that we would be going to America for her sister's graduation. She just mm -hmm. came and said, oh, mom, they've given us a date, you know, and that date falls within the same trip, you know, that we're going to celebrate her, her sister's graduation. Wow. So God is faithful. He has not forgotten us. He knows the desires of our hearts mm -hmm. and he met us right at that point. Glory to God. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, glory and praise be to God. Thank you for sharing that glorious testimony. Amen. Who goes next? Okay, I'll ask my wife, Gloria, to give on behalf of the family for her daughter's IB graduation. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I, I be for herself is here, so I would have preferred she, she gives the testimony. But I will still go ahead and thank God. I just want to thank God for what he has done for us as a family. Thank him. I thank him for what he has done for us as a people. He's been good and he's been faithful. All the testimonies so far we've heard 
points us to the faithfulness of God, and that is his name. He will remain faithful. He cannot deny himself. So I want to thank him. Join my voice with others and thank him. And thank him, since you have mentioned for Abufo's graduation from the IB diploma program successfully. Thank you, Lord. We join to thank God who has seen her through successfully. Um, on Friday, we had that graduation. We'll give God praise. Can we take the last one? Anybody of us to share one more testimony? Could be about you, it could be about the person you ministered to. We have plenty testimonies, plenty. Okay, all right, yeah. Mayan, please go ahead, Mayan. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am delighted to be here today. Most times I'm never able to meet of this Sunday service because I have to be in my own church. And today we're able to round up on time. And just seeing that the time is still in my hands, I had to quickly uh, join. I want to thank God. He's been faithful all the way. I want to thank God for what God is using my uncle, the pastor Godwin to do in our family, in our lives. I also want to thank God specifically for my home, my husband, my children. God has been faithful. It was the Lord's intervention when my daughter was meant to go to Ukraine. It was this same pastor I ran to and he gave me the wise counseling and he told me the Lord will speak to you. And we made the choice and the God in heaven took us to another direction. And to God be the glory that girl has rounded up our first and she didn't take any exam. She was exempted in all her tests. And today, to the glory of God, we can smile and when we look back and see the hand of God mightily and what mm. is happening in the Ukraine, we can only but thank him. Mm. It is so awesome. It's so awesome that sometimes I really don't know what to wow. say. I just cry yeah. and said, what would I have done mm. if not for the mercy of God? Oh, so I just yes. want to say thank you. Jesus. Lord, it's, you only you. it's only you. You alone. Yes. You alone. Yes, Lord. May his name alone be highly exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God for restoring peace to my home. Amen. I just want to thank God also for my, my workplace. It's really been turbulence, the Niger Delta, the River State as a whole, everything. I want to thank God on behalf of my family of Danabia. God has been awesome preserving each and every one of us, not allowing us to see evil. God has been protecting each and every one of us, being each other's keeper, brothers and sisters, being there for one another. I want to return all glory. He's been faithful in all ways. God yes, alone Lord, has been faithful to each and every one of us. May his name alone be highly exalted in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, to God be all glory and praise. You know, when she was sharing that testimony, uh, I, uh, me too, I mean, I almost shed tears just remembering it. And again, to remind all brothers and sisters, I, I am just praying that we will all come to this place of peace, a place that we are relaxed in this our God. You know, just knowing that your father loves you, you know, just knowing that everything he has provided for us in Christ Jesus and by his Holy Spirit, if we pay attention and allow him to teach us, we will always enjoy the best. So just to again, um, uh, join to magnify the Lord in that testimony. So you understand, it was a choice where the daughter got admission to go into university main program straight in Ukraine. 
versus for her to go somewhere else and do, if you like, a pre-degree. So as young people, as you know, they are always thinking about their peers have gone into school. And this uh, very bright child that has already done one year preparatory or so. And the question was, what do you do? And like she said, haven't prayed, and I got leading as well, because sometimes I just try to allow the spirit to take control. And I said to her, pray, you will get the answer. And just said a few things. And she went and prayed. After that, she spoke to the daughter, and the daughter herself got convinced that she should go the other way. I told them, that's the right way, go. And they left Ukraine left the direct admission and went to do the one that was like a pre-degree, even with the risk that you could finish and you don't get admission. But because God guided them, they took God's directive, God's direction. It's important. That's why I say, let me em emphasize this testimony again so we know our God loves us. And today, when the things were unfolding, she left uh, last year, right? And then, was it, was it last year or early this year? Yes, last year. And today, with all what is unfolding, where would she have been? Where would they have been? And meanwhile, the other route is very successful. Glory be to God. Beloved brothers and sisters, with all this, love of God, goodness of God, mercy of God. We want to join our voices together and say, all oh, the glory we give to our God. For he is worthy of our praise. No man on should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. Father God, receive all these testimonies of all these your children and take all glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, we pray together in agreement that in all our lives, greater, mightier, bigger testimonies will abound to your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, give every one of us testimonies to continually give you thanks Receive our thanks, almighty God. Receive our thanks, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To you, our God, be all glory, all praise, all honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now we want to pray. Take our prayer for the new month. And you know, we always go through our scriptures, the scripture for the year and the scripture for the month. So we're going to start with the scripture for the month. And please get ready to read for me. So our scripture for the month, our text for the month is Psalm 102, verse 13. Psalm 102, verse 13. Our theme for the month is our month of divine mercy divine mercy, the mercy of God will continually speak for you. Fear not, brothers and sisters. God will show you mercy. Mercy. So, if you are there, please read it for us, Psalm 102. Another person open to our scripture for the year, Psalm 91, verses 1 through 12. Another person will read that. So, let's take Psalm 102. And then the next person, please freely open the line and read. 
so we can pray. Psalm 102, verse 13. Who wants to read? Open the line and read. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Psalm 102, verse 13. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Amen. Thank you. Psalm 91, 1 to 12. He who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His, tr his truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. Amen. No evil shall befall you. No Amen. Shall come near your dwelling. Amen. No, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you Amen. in all your ways. Amen. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. Then John chapter 10, verse 10b. John chapter 10, verse 10b. Anybody there read? Okay, I'll take it quickly. These are the three scriptures, brothers and sisters. You should read them every day and pray with them. John chapter 10, verse 10b. Because this year, you remember, it is our year of abundant life in Christ Jesus. You will enjoy God's abundance in the name of Jesus. Why the characteristic of the year is roller coaster, wild, uncertain changes, adverse changes. For you, it is your year of abundant life. It's my year of abundant life in Christ Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 10, verse 10b. Let's read it together. I read, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Before we pray over this word, I want you to anchor your faith on the word of God. Open your own Bible to Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 37. And please write this down. Because there are still many of us who still do not understand how to, you know, take our position and stand by faith. Faith in God and in his promises. So, Psalm, uh, Lamentations 3.37, before we pray, the Bible says, who is he who speaks? And it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it. Is it not from the Lord? That's uh, 38, I'm adding 38. Is it not from the mouth of the Most High that woe and well-being proceed? So, have understanding. Whatever God has not spoken concerning you will not stand. It will not come to pass. And on the other hand, whatever God has spoken, if you can find it in the Bible and you can believe it, stand upon it. God will do it for you. God will do it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's take our prayer then. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the month of January, February, March, April, May. And thank you for bringing me into the month of June. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word that you have given to me, given to us. That this is our month of divine mercy. Lord, I thank you. And I ask almighty God 
Let your mercy cover me like a shield in this month of June. Cover my family, cover everything that concerns me in Jesus' mighty name. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, according to your word, in Psalm 32, verse 10, let your mercy surround me. Surround every second, every minute, every hour. Let your mercy be upon me in every second, every minute, every hour, every day of this month and throughout this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, in this month of June, oh, let your mercy speak for me where I am unable to speak for myself, where I am unable to defend myself, where I am on, I don't have access to. Father, let your mercy defend me. Let your mercy speak for me. Speak for me in the day. Speak for me in the night. Speak for my family. Go ahead and pray now. Pray for yourself. Expand this prayer of mercy. Pray for yourself. Pray fervently. Lord, this month of June, it is my month of mercy. Let your mercy speak for me. Let your mercy show up for me. Let your mercy speak for my wife. Let your mercy speak for my children. Let your mercy speak, almighty God, in the spiritual, in the physical. Let your mercy speak in all realms of life and existence. Father, let your mercy surround me in every second, minute, hour, day, weeks, and throughout this month and throughout this year. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Pray with me again and say, Heavenly Father, let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy prevail over every judgment. Whatever has stood in my life, whatever has been standing that is contrary to your will. Now, Lord, the time for your mercy to stand against it. The time for your mercy to annul every evil judgment. Everything that is contrary to the promises of God. Your word says I shall be above and never beneath. Your word says I shall be above and never beneath. Lord, your word says I shall succeed. I shall have good success. I put my trust and confidence in you. Your word says I shall have good health. For you are the Lord that healeth me. There shall be none barren in the land. Your word says, whatsoever I do shall prosper. My leaf shall not wither. Your word says, I shall be fruitful. Your word says, Jesus, you have come according to John chapter 10, verse 10b, that I may have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, every promise that you have spoken in your word concerning me, let them come to pass in my life. But let nothing, nothing, nothing that is not of you have any power anymore. Let no failure stand in my life. Let no failure stand in my family. Let no failure stand in the lives of my brothers and sisters. Father, by your mercy, oh, like the blind Bartimaeus cried to you and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And you touched him and you healed his blindness. Heal our blindness. Heal our sickness, heal our diseases. Father, every form of blindness, spiritual blindness, physical blindness, blindness of seeing opportunities, blindness in, our, in, in, in seeing the strategy that works for us, for our lives. Lord, whatever is like blindness, heal us, O oh God. By your mercy, just visit us. By your mercy, open the gate of success unto us in this month of June. Let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy go ahead of us. You make every second, every minute, every hour, every day of this month the mo a peaceful time, a peaceful moment, a prosperous time, a prosperous moment, a joyous time, a joyous moment. Let this be our month of victory also. Father, in this year, we are trusting and believing you for abundance, your abundance, your abundance, that bubbling life of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Let that life manifest in us, manifest in our family. In every situation of challenge, let us have victory by your mercy. 
God, whatever has stood contrary to, our, to, to your will in our lives, whatever has stood as an opposition, as a hindrance to our progress, by your mercy, let them melt like wax right now. By your power, in the name of Jesus. Father, just take glory in our lives. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I believe you still have things you want to pray about. Oh, go ahead and pray. Take the next one, two minutes and pray for yourself. Pray for your family. Pray for your goals. You know, we always pray for our goals that we have set things we have desired to do. Don't give up. Don't be afraid. Pursue your goals and your dreams. Your God is with you. The mercy of God will continue to speak for you. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Commit your ways. Commit your ways. Commit your goals. Commit your desires into God's hand. Thank you, our Lord and our God. Let's bring our prayer to a close. In Jesus' name. Now let's pray corporately and tell God thank you again. We want to thank him corporately for this month. Let's tell him, Lord, take glory in our lives. Let our lives please you. Let us do that which pleases you. Let's yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit of God and tell him, Father, lead us by your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we surrender to you and ask that you lead us. Go ahead and pray. Lead me, lead us in this month. Open our ears to hear you speak the will of God, the mind of God to us and guide us. Give us the strength to be able to do the will of God. Go ahead and pray. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' name. Now let's pray for the nations, starting from your own nation and indeed from wherever you are, your family praying. As I've said, in this roller coaster year, pray that the mercy of God will protect your family, will protect your nation. Your nation will not collapse. And let's pray for the nations of the earth that God will show mercy. And that's why we've really chosen as led by the Spirit of God this month of June to really plead for the mercy of God. Because as I've said, we don't know what is going to happen in the second half. But I can tell you, brothers and sisters, it's not going to be the same. And so we pray, Lord, that by your mercy, you will heal the nations of the earth. Let the war cease, O oh God Almighty. By your mercy, prevail. Let your mercy prevail. Let your mercy keep, keep us, keep your church, keep your children. Father, we pray by your mercy. You will guide the leaders of the world. You will guide them, Lord. You will guide them, Father, that they will be able to resolve the conflicts they will be able to come out of their stripes. They will surrender to the peace that is in Christ Jesus. For only Jesus is the answer to the troubles and the problems in the world. We plead your mercy that you will open the understanding of all people of all nations to know your peace, to accept your peace that is in Christ Jesus and to have and enjoy your peace. Let your peace reign, O oh God, in our communities, in our neighborhood, in our families, in our lives, in everything we do, Lord. Let your peace reign. Thank you, our Lord and our God. To you, our Father, be all glory, all honor, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And now, Lord, we join our voices together, and we pray for the elect of God, particularly those that have not yet found 
their way into Christ. We pray that the Holy Spirit will convict them and draw them unto Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, the Savior of all mankind, that they, their eyes of understanding may be enlightened to come to the Savior, come to God's salvation for mankind. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that you will show mercy to the entire world and you will redeem, O oh God. Those who are calling on you, those who are looking for the Savior, looking for salvation, let your Holy Spirit lead them to the truth that is in Christ Jesus. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. As we bring this meeting to a close, Lord, we ask that you will continue to glorify your name in our lives, in our families, and that, Lord, our lives will please you, our lives will glorify you. That this month of June, Lord, will be a special month in our lives and in our families and in our communities, in our neighborhood, and we will see your glory. We will see your mercy. Thank you, our Lord and our God. All praise and thanks be to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So I've mentioned our three scriptures. We always have two scriptures uh, well for this year. We have two texts for the year, which I've mentioned, Psalm 91, 1 to uh, 12, and John chapter 10, verse 10b, that we read the whole uh, verses. I mean, the whole verse, rather. And then for the month, we have a, a scripture. So you've heard it, Psalm 102, verse 13. Make it a practice to read these scriptures. Uh, some people, I don't know, at times they get bored of reading one scripture repeatedly. But for somebody like me, when I read one scripture repeatedly, I get more revelation. For example, yesterday when I read Psalm 91, this same Psalm 91, I, I, for over probably two hours, I could not finish praying with Psalm 91. I, I could not. I, it was... Okay, and uh, Sister Comfort shared such experience the other day, just reading Genesis chapter 1, some verses in Genesis chapter 1. So that's it, so uh, these three scriptures. Now, we've been embarking on studying the Bible uh, systematically. So we went through studying the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then we went into the book of Acts, which we st uh, also studied together throughout the month of May. And now then we have gone into studying uh, Romans and we have just completed yesterday, First Corinthians. So today we commence the studying of Second Corinthians. So I want to encourage every one of us to join this Bible study. We read a chapter of the Bible a day, systematically book, by book. Uh, but those who have followed and followed the teaching have confirmed that they now have a better understanding of the Bible. And we're and, and our own place as Christians today, especially having gone through the book of Acts, knowing what Acts mean. You know, like we said that the, the, the book of Acts is called the Acts of the Apostles, but it is actually the, act, the Acts of God and Jesus Christ in the life of the apostles and early believers. And that act, or those acts of God, continue in our lives today because we are the ones continuing in the apostles and the early believers way. That's why we are Christians. So the acts continue today. And we challenge ourselves to carry out a search, a research, anything you can find in the book of Acts that God did for and through the apostles and the believers. 
It is your right to have the same done in your life and through you. That's the challenge we took out. So many are already uh, healing the sick, praying for the sick, or some, let me not say many, some of us are already taking that challenge, preaching and praying for the sick. And God, Jesus is the same. He is the healer. Is when you don't go out, you don't see. But when you take his word and you do it, you see him manifest in your life and in the life of others. So I encourage you to join us as we commence the study of Second Corinthians uh, today. We're going to go through that, the, the book of Second Corinthians. So, and we will continue to study the letter of Paul. And then we will discuss. So a chapter a day. So today... In 2 Corinthians chapter 1. I want to share the grace now. Are we ready? In this month of divine mercy, the mercy of God locates you in the day, in the night, when you're sleeping, when you are awake, when you go out, when you come inside, the mercy of God surround you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The mercy of God go ahead of you in this month and make every day the day of divine favor unto you. The mercy of God, just as we have read in Psalm 102, 13, the mercy of you the place of God's favor in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, according to Psalm 32, verse 10, there the Bible says, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him, the mercy of God, and compass you like a shield. In the name of Jesus, let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me, shall follow you, shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Shalom. The peace of God be with you, and the mercy of God surround you. In the name of Jesus. Bye-bye. And God bless you. Bye.